All right, we're going to get you the latest information on this. The planned docking of Boeing Starliner right now at the International Space Station has been pushed back as flight controllers work to troubleshoot some last-minute problems. And obviously, this isn't the first delay that the mission has faced. Two earlier launch attempts had to be scrubbed because of technical problems. But the Starliner finally lifted off from Cape Canaveral yesterday. And now we're trying to see if they can successfully complete their mission with in terms of docking. So CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood joins us now from the Kennedy Space Center. So, Bill, the Starliner was originally scheduled to dock at the ISS at 1215 Eastern. Tell us what is happening right now and what delayed it and brought it to this point. Well, they had to troubleshoot some problems with some of their maneuvering thrusters. They're called reaction control system jets or RCS jets. Uh, they had to disable several of them. They had to run some tests to recover them. Uh, that held them up for sure. They missed their first docking opportunity, as you say. But they have since run some tests that got most of those jets back in operation. And they're now pushing in uh, for docking as we speak. Uh, they started at about the 30-foot point, And as you can see, they're moving in right now. This is a view uh, from a space station camera. They're flying in orbital darkness over the Indian Ocean, so it's not a daylight view, but that's the Starliner with the three docking lights turned on um, uh, approaching uh, the International Space Station's forward port. So, cool. so they're just a few moments away from completing this rendezvous and uh, docking with the International Space Station. Bill, this is incredible to watch in real time. Keep narrating what we're witnessing as it docks with the <laughs> ISS. Yeah, what you're seeing here is the docking mechanism itself on the front end of the Boeing Starliner. Um, it is going to engage its counterpart on the front end of the Harmony module. Then hooks and latches will engage. It'll pull the spacecraft in to make a firm, airtight seal. Uh, and then they'll do a lot of leak checks. They won't open hatches now for a couple of orbits after docking, but then they'll be welcomed on board the station, uh, and this phase of the flight will come to an end. Uh, getting very close now, as you can see. 0.5 meters. What you're seeing in the bottom right of this picture is the mechanism on the front end of the International Space Station. So they're literally just a few feet away. It looks like it just engaged there. It's amazing it's a little how much bit of control pushback. they have. Yeah. And the NASA's feed just flipped back to the animation where you can see some more about the telemetry, it looks like, uh, and all of the minute precision work that goes into making this a success. Let's, I wonder if we can listen in and hear what they're saying. Their arrival. Of course, as, as soon as I said that, uh, NASA's feed stops, uh, the person uh, at NASA stops telling us about uh, exactly what is happening. This is a vision, uh, this is a look um, at, uh, at the command center there. Can you tell us anything more about what they all look like? They are watching so intently what is happening on their screens. It, at this point, yeah. is, it, is it safe to release the breath that we've collectively all been holding? Oh, definitely. They're docked. I mean, they, they, are, they successfully pulled off contact and capture. Uh, that's mission control at the Johnson Space Center. A moment ago, you were seeing Ed Van Seis, the flight director, uh, who's been monitoring all of this very closely. But sorry, listening for a second. But they're definitely docked. So that's a, that's a very good thing. We were wondering about this earlier because of these problems they were having with their maneuvering jets. But uh, all is well that ends well in that context. So uh, like I said, they'll pull the, the capsule in for a firm... Uh, seal uh, before they can open hatches and the two crew members, uh, uh, Barry Wilmore and Sunita Williams, can move inside the station and join that crew for the next week or so. And it's a reminder of how much effort and work goes into all of this, Bill. Earlier, what held, held them up was this helium leak you were telling us about, as well as the maneuvering jets failing, not enough redundancy. They'll be able to get back to Earth safely, but what do those problems mean? Good question. Uh, we don't really know yet because they don't have access to all the data and the telemetry. Some of these things could be minor problems, unrelated. I mean, all spacecraft uh, have little glitches that we don't talk about that much. But in the case of the Starliner, their history of delays getting to the launch pad and getting into orbit uh, makes all of that uh, more interesting, I guess, than it would normally be. Mm -hmm. But having said that, in this case, the helium leaks are troublesome because it indicates 
They may have some sort of a generic problem, which is going to require some, some analysis and troubleshooting to correct that across their fleet. Uh, and the thruster issues, is too soon to say. I'm not sure uh, what's responsible for that. Like I said, they recovered most of them, so there, it might just be you know, sensors that are overly sensitive. They just had to change the software a little bit. Uh, those kind of things, are it's just hard to know right now. We're expecting a news conference later in the day, so hopefully we'll get some details and some answers to those questions. And Boeing Starliner obviously beleaguered over time, over budget, but now they have successfully docked, and the mission for Butch and Sonny at the ISS starts. Uh, tell us a little bit about what they're expected to do there over the next eight days. Well, it's not so much what they're expected to do at the space station. It's what they're expected to do on the way to the station, while they're there, and then after they undock and head back to Earth. They're really trying to put the Starliner through its paces. They want to make sure they test all of its systems uh, to give NASA some confidence that the spacecraft is ready to begin operational flights carrying crews to and from the International Space Station. So depending on how all this plays out, NASA would like to begin that process early next year, launching a full-time crew to the station aboard a Starliner. But that remains to be seen. We're going to have to see how these problems are resolved and how much work is required to do that. All right. Bill Harwood, thank you.